Well, a very good afternoon. It's Friday the 5th of September 2008, just coming up to 1 o'clock Friday lunchtime. And as usual, I've been sat here at my desk in Cornwall since uh, about 6 o'clock this morning and uh, I've done what I feel is a day's work. Uh, getting to that stage now where I've kind of had enough, so I'm probably going to go out and get a couple of hours of fresh air and then maybe just uh, tidy a few things up later on this afternoon before I close the office down for the weekend. And uh, I thought it would be worthwhile just spending a few minutes sharing with you what I'm seeing out there in the dental marketplace at the moment. Um, I'm still doing some um, runoff work as a business coach uh, following my departure from Breathe Business. And in fact, uh, next week we'll be presenting uh, three days on behalf of Breathe. Uh, on Wednesday, we have a team training day in the West End in London on the subject of the patient journey. We're expecting probably about 30, 40 people there. Uh, Thursday, I am working with uh, a group of orthodontic practices uh, in uh, Hertfordshire. Uh, again presenting the patient journey. Friday next week I'm really looking forward to because we have the um, marketing day that's been organised by independent seminars and I'll be co-presenting with James Gulnick from Bolain Dental and also with Ian Scott from Base Creative and we've got an absolutely cracking day lined up. I saw James's uh, presentation on Monday and he's really gone to town on it. He's got some great uh, stuff to show the audience so we know that's going to be a really good day so it's going to be an exciting week next week <coughs> although I suppose the most significant part of the week will be Tuesday uh, because on Tuesday the 9th of September I will be celebrating my 55th birthday I know you can't believe it can you and um, not quite sure what I'm going to be doing on the day um, nothing planned at this stage probably go and ride my bike or have a walk on the beach I don't know but uh, it's a bit of a red letter day 55 and uh, as I recently said on my Facebook site it's unusual at the age of 55 to be starting your career over uh, but that brings me to the second uh, part of my activity which of course is beginning to um, get things moving as far as the IDH private sector division is concerned and uh, building up a hit list of potential acquisition candidates which have emerged largely out of the blog post that I wrote on the subject and also um, uh, the newsletter that uh, Breathe kindly sent out which pointed everybody at the blog so it's been very interesting I'm not quite sure whether there's a lot of principals who have got back from the holidays in August and have kind of walked back into it after having a, a few weeks in the sun and have thought oh my god I don't want to run a business so I've had a few kind of emails from people saying I've just got back from my holidays can I sell my practice to you and uh, I'm not quite sure how serious that is but also some serious enquiries as well and one of the things that I'm doing with the acquisitions team at IDH at the moment is beginning to work on the financial formulas uh, which we will need to make an assessment of whether a private or mixed practice is suitable for acquisition and also what it is that we're going to pay for it. Um, and I think as I've mentioned in an earlier blog post, the criteria for acquisition in the private sector are very different from those in the NHS division and so we are literally building a template at the moment um, of the key performance indicators that we'll need to look at for acquisition and uh, also um, the type of practice that we think will suit the business model going forward and it's really interesting because it really is a blank sheet uh, to work on. We are inventing this business um, and uh, the first few clients that we're beginning to talk to now are very much acting as um, pilots for what we think will follow later on. Needless to say, I'm thoroughly enjoying the work. It's very, very challenging intellectually. Um, I seem to be uh, busier than ever. I'm supposed to be on a kind of garden leave this month and uh, I've just got so much work to do, it's incredible. Um, been really really busy so looking forward to that going forward out there in the world of dentistry um, people are back from holiday uh, both the, the dentists and the patients and um, I think I, I previously posted a, a video blog 
on how busy the shops were in Manchester last week and uh, certainly the evidence seems to be that those dentists that are continuing to offer um, higher value treatment to the over 50s demographic seem to be as busy as ever and uh, I've been getting emails this morning from implant clients um, and contacts and friends who are telling me that they've got a waiting list for the delivery of treatment. One client this morning, uh, the biggest problem they're dealing with at the moment is a two-month waiting list for a first patient consult. How's about that for a problem? So the, uh, the implant and the high-value treatment guys are doing really well, provided they are aiming at the over-50s demographic. Uh, the orthodontists all seem to be doing very well and whether it's private orthodontics, orthodontics for teenagers or whether it's private orthodontics for uh, grown-ups, uh, whether it's Invisalign or ClearStep or any of the other processes, everybody's talking about businesses booming. And then the weak links in the marketplace are the 25 to 35 age group where the cosmetic smile makeover, whether it's wall-to-wall veneers um, or whether it's tooth whitening, that 25-35 group are under pressure at the moment. They're worried about their jobs. Uh, they're worried about uh, cost of living. Many have, got, have gone into buy-to-let properties and have got empty properties and mortgages. And so that discretionary spend on cosmetic dentistry and facial aesthetics seems to be um, delayed. And then there's the basic family market. And again, we're, we're getting, I'm getting emails from people telling me that the, the appointment books are gappy in the family market as well. So it seems that what you need to do to survive this credit crunch of ours is to focus very, very carefully on the demographic that you're aiming at and to focus very carefully on the type of treatment that you're delivering. And it would appear that the higher the cost of the treatment, the more robust the market is out there for business. And finally, of course, I'm not going to um, uh, um, forget to mention that those practices that are really working very, very hard on the benefits of their membership, uh, whether it's underwritten by one membership scheme company or another isn't the point here. The benefits of membership of the practice, which I've written about previously, uh, again, we're back from the summer. It's time to get out there and start reinforcing to your family clients the benefits of membership and also to start looking at the provision of group benefits for local large employers. So uh, none of that really has changed from the stuff I was talking about at the end of July, beginning of August, but I thought it'd be worthwhile just spending a few minutes repeating the point uh, now that we move into the September marketing season. And this is the time uh, when people need to be marketed to. I was going to say the back from holiday and there's been a change in the weather. Um, you could hardly think so, considering what a lousy summer we've had. Uh, but certainly, you know what, the nights are drawing in, uh, people aren't thinking about beaches and sunshine anymore, they're probably thinking about Christmas shopping, and now's the time to really reinforce your marketing campaigns and uh, make yourself extremely visible, not just to your patients, but also to your potential strategic alliance partners out there in your local community. So that's my uh, State of the Nation report. It uh, might not be quite as good as the Republican Party convention, which has been quite entertaining the last couple of evenings. Uh, but uh, Friday afternoon, I'm going to be closing down shortly. I'm going to wish you a very good weekend. And uh, uh, as you can see, I've got my flip video now, so I'll probably be doing a few more video posts as we go along. Hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, for now, have a great weekend.